All right. Uh, for a connected planar graph, is the Euler characteristic always two? Yes. Yep. So we so starts out true. Okay. In so the beginning. Looks out. Looks at this one point, uh -huh. one vertex, no edges, and one region. So that gives us two. Um, it stays true when we add a connected vertex. So you can imagine sort of adding one edge and one vertex, which would be adding um, one to something we're adding and one to something we're subtracting away. Mm -hmm. So those would cancel out okay. and zero. So you'd still be able to get two. And it stays true when we cut a region with a new edge. So if you added one edge here and divided one region into two regions, you'd be adding one region and an edge. One of these things you're subtracting away and one of these things you're adding in. So those would cancel. All right, cool. And then here he shows it also works in a way for three-dimensional solids. But instead of counting the number of regions it divides a plane into, you count the number of faces. Ah, interesting. Okay. <coughs> So we count the number of, so we draw uh, a 3D, like a cube. Yep. And, yeah, okay, so now we don't count the vertices, edges, now we count faces instead of regions. Interesting, all right? Yep, um, and then, so you go through with all of these um, uh, three-dimensional solids, uh -huh. and it all works out to be two, surprisingly enough. Yeah. And then oh, there's just, the last one. That is it. You just draw another 3D solid. I just did a square pyramid on top of a sort of a smooshed cube box. And that also worked out to be two. All right. Um, since we got like, you know, two minutes left in this, imagine if we can draw this between the Tripod leg. Imagine we have a donut. Can you zoom out just a little bit? And I put a vertex there, and I just draw a loop around it. So, how many vertices do I have? Um, you have one. How many edges do I have? One. And how many faces do I have? Um, well, I guess you'd also have one, but you just have the circular face here. Well, what, remember, with the faces were the 2D. Yeah, the two. Yeah, so where, where is the one face? You're right that we just have one face here, but where is it? Um, it's when, it's where you're looping around here. It's sort of like an elliptical face, almost. Or it could be a perfect circle if you go straight up and down. Okay. That would enclose your one face in here. It's sort of like a slice of this donut. I see. Yeah, I would, I think, although it's interesting that you're saying it that way, I would have thought the face was the whole donut itself, actually. Because, mm -hmm. like on the cube, you could walk around the faces. Yeah. But in any case, vertis vertices one, edges one, faces one. So sure. our formula here is a little different. Yeah, it sort of would break a little bit for shapes like these. Yeah, so what do you think the issue is here? Um, well, a face, your faces here would be a little bit more confusing to find. They have to be two-dimensional as well. So I guess you would have that issue as well. Also, the torus might be a four-dimensional shape. Yeah, is that puzzling? Yeah. Puzzling as to what, what's actually going on here. But yeah, so just like he showed some examples where it broke in, in, on the plane, like where it wasn't connected. Yeah. <coughs> There's some examples um, of, of shapes where it breaks. It seems to break again in higher dimensions. Mm -hmm. 
And so you know, just have to kind of, it's an interesting topic. It's really fun to try to figure out what's going on. Yeah. All right, good work this morning, huh?